Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today I am going to show you how to make this beautiful beaded wooden lanyard using beech wood beads, some silicon beads, and a safety clasp. Beaded lanyards are a great alternative to your standard lanyards. There are so many ways to customize it with focal beads and colorful clay beads. In this tutorial, I am also going to show you how to secure your clasp as close to the end beads as possible with a few simple tricks. So without further ado, let's begin. So here is what you'll need. Some glue, here I'm using the E6000. A piece of cardboard to put your glue on, a crafting needle, a toothpick or stick of some sort, scissors, clasp, your focal beads, 10 millimeter beach wooden beads, a set of safety clasp, 1.5 millimeter satin nylon cord, and a variety of 6 millimeter clay beads. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I've used these four colors. You will also require two 10 millimeter natural wood beads with a smaller hole size. These are needed as end beads for the lanyard that you will see later. So the first step would be to cut a length of 1.5 meter nylon cord. Then you'll want to fold that in half. Grab your clasp and loop the cord through the bottom of the clasp like so. Next, you'll want to pop your focal beads on. To make my life easier, I am going to use my nifty crafting needle, which will cut your creating time in half. So I'm going in first with a 14mm silicon bead, a large daisy and peach, and an engraved letter bead. Pulling that all the way through. After that, you are going to want to split the string in two, left and right, and start working on one side first. So in this case, we'll work on the left string. Now to make a completed length of 34 inches for the lanyard, we will need 10 sections of 4 beechwood beads separated by 4 clay beads. Now pulling up my crafting needle again, I'm going to start working on one side. And I'm going to say this again, the crafting needle is such a valuable tool. In this case, instead of individually beading each bead onto the string, I am going to stack them up onto my needle. Again, keeping in mind that we need four beechwood beads and four clay beads for each section. And we're making up 10 sections on each side of the lanyard. Our crafting needle holds three sections. So once I'm done stacking them up, I am just going to pull the needle all the way through all those beads and it's going to pull that string through as well and it's super easy to do until I get to 10 sections and I am just going to repeat the same process. So once I'm done with that, I decide that I don't want to end the lanyard with clay spacer beads. So I'm going to take my end wooden bead, which has a much smaller hole than the beach wooden bead, and you'll see why. I'm just going to pop it through. And now we're going to secure all those beads by tying a knot, like so. And then to make sure that the knot doesn't slip through the wooden end bead, I'm going to do a, another knot over the first knot. And now you can see why I've used a smaller sized wooden hole as the end bead as opposed to the beech wood bead which has a larger hole size. And now for added, added security, I'm going to do a third knot over the first two knots. 
This is completely optional because two knots is sufficient, but I'm just going to do it for added security, like I mentioned. Make sure all three knots are tight. And now we are going to move on to the next few steps, which are the most important steps in this whole beaded lanyard making process. So please pay attention. So now you want to leave a tiny bit of space and add a fourth knot. This fourth knot is going to be quite loose, so we're not going to pull it to make it tight like we did with the first three knots. So be very careful with this one and make sure that you leave a tiny bit of space between the fourth knot and the first three overlapping knots. That gap is where your safety clasp is going to sit on. Now you're going to grab your safety clasp or one half of your safety clasp. And you're going to put the string through the bottom and then you are going to gently tug at the string. The idea being that the fourth knot has to sit inside the clasp, like so. And then next, you want to grab your pair of scissors and cut the string as close to the clasp as possible. The more you can cut off the better because the next step is when we're going to push that excess string into the clasp. So the next step is the all-important magical step and it involves your E6000 glue. I have used several brands of crafting glue and I've just found the E6000 to be the best as it cures quite quickly and it bonds really well. So what you're going to do next is to add glue into the clasp so we sell the E6000 glue in two different sizes. We have the full size tube with precision tips, which are actually really, really helpful. But we also have the mini size tubes. For this tutorial, I'm using the full size tube. And I've used up all the precision tips, but that's okay because I've got my cardboard and my toothpick. Woohoo! So the next step would be, as I mentioned, to glue down the knot inside the clasp. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to drop a blob of glue on my cardboard. You can use regular paper, hard plastic, whatever that holds your glue. In this case, I've used scrap cardboard. And then I'm going to use my toothpick to apply the glue into the clasp. So here's my blob of E6000 glue. I'm going to set it down and I'm going to pick up my toothpick can use a fine stick, whatever that you have, to apply the glue into the clasp. So I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of glue and I'm going to try and stick it as far down as I can. So the main purpose of this is to secure the knot that's inside the clasp and this glue, when it's cured, is going to hold that knot in place. So you want to make sure you add a pretty generous amount of glue inside but you also don't want to be adding too much that it spills out of the class because that's just not a good look. So keep that in mind when you're adding the glue and make sure you're adding bit by bit and you're building it up as opposed to squeezing in a large amount of glue to begin with because that's harder to clean up. So when I'm just about done, I like to take the other end of the toothpick, the clean end, and just kind of remove any excess glue along the outer edges of the clasp. And now that we're done, we're going to set this aside and work on the right side of the lanyard. So with the other side, you're going to do the exact same thing. We need 10 sections of 4 beech wood beads and 4 clay spaces. So again, coming in with my super nifty crafting needle which is such an invaluable tool for anyone working with wooden beads and silicon beads. I have some of my customers buying multiples of the crafting needles just because they use it so much. So after we're done with our beads, again, we're going to grab our smaller hole size end bead and put it through the string. And again, we're going to tie a knot as close to the end bead as we possibly can. And just to match up with the other side, I'm going to do an, another two knots to make a super secure triple knot.
and then like we did before we are going to add a fourth looser knot keeping in mind that you need to leave that little bit of space between the three knots and that fourth knot which is where your clasp is going to sit so grabbing the other half of the breakaway clasp we're going to put the string through the bottom again and that fourth knot is going to go inside the clasp so give it a little tug grab your pair of scissors and snip the extra string off as close to the clasp as you possibly can squeeze 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 and taking the same E6000 glue, we are going to add it bit by bit into the clasp to secure that knot inside. Here, I'm going to emphasize that you do not want to put in too much glue at the start. You want to build it up. So put in a little bit at the very bottom and you can push down any excess string into the clasp. And again, you can use the other end of the toothpick to remove any excess glue close to the edge of the clasp which can look unsightly when it dries out so keep that in mind so when you are done with both sides you want to leave the lanyard overnight for at least 24 hours to let the glue completely cure okay so 24 hours later and this is what we have the clasp end is going to feel a little stiff and that's completely normal and that's expected because the glue has cured and dried can look inside the clasp to see if there is any unsightly spots that you want to get rid of. You can test it by closing and opening that clasp and if you give each side a little wiggle it should feel sturdy and stiff and that's what you want. I'm going to say this again that the E6000 brand of glue is the best I've tried for this particular tutorial but if you have any other recommendations for any brands I'm all ears so you can let me know down in the comments section below and now I'm coming in with the hot tip the first tip is probably the most underrated tip but having sold supplies in the last six to seven years I just want to say that the quality of the clasp you use is going to matter so much especially given that the lanyard is something that you would use almost every day if not every day you need a clasp that is strong and sturdy and will not break on you and our range of superior clasp is top quality super sturdy super durable comes in four different colors you will love these when you start using them you can actually feel the quality difference the lanyard is going to hold name tags and keys and you definitely want it to hold up over the years and be sturdy for everyday use. So please do not compromise on your clasp quality if it feels flimsy and thin, do not use it. Here's a fun fact, we actually had those crappy quality clasp when we first started our business and then we had so many complaints that we combed the market and managed to find these superior quality ones and since then we've had zero complaints second hot tip try not to use too many focal beads on your lanyard the average silicon focal bead weighs about six to eight grams and stacking them up would just mean that your lanyard is going to be pretty heavy overall and probably not comfortable for the wearer especially if they're using it for more than a few hours at a time which is how most lanyards are worn around the neck so make sure that you're not using too many focal beads speaking of focal beads we have a wide range of silicon and non-silicon focal beads that you can use for your lanyards key rings etc these are just some of the popular ones that we have including these cute little crescent moon with leaf patterns on them which is what I designed and had it exclusively made for us we also have this retro butterfly and also silicon beads in a variety of shapes and sizes this is our best-selling blush cow print and daisy print in the 19 millimeter abacus size and as a good lighter weight alternative to silicon beads we have engraved wooden beads that come in a range of cute 
designs and patterns. The abacus doll is also a popular size and shape and we have designs on them as well as meaningful short quotes like this be kind engraved bead and if you want to personalize your lanyard we have a range of engraved letter beads as well so definitely head on to our website and check out our full range the third hot tip relates to the size of the beechwood beads so we have 8 10 and 12 millimeter beechwood beads i found that of the three sizes the 10 millimeter is the best to use in terms of everything so the eight millimeter is cute but the whole size is pretty small and our crafting needle will not fit through that easily additionally you'll have to use more eight millimeter beads to make up the same lanyard length as opposed to the 10 and the 12. and the 12 millimeter although it looks just a smidgen larger than the 10 millimeter i've tried making a lanyard out of the 12 millimeter and it just on a whole looks chunkier and less dainty and just doesn't look as nice so i've concluded that out of the three sizes the 10 millimeter is the best size to use last but not least when it comes to choosing between our natural wood or beech wood beads to use for your lanyard definitely go with beech wood beech wood is known for its antibacterial antifungal and anti-mold properties so natural wood over time can develop mold on them whereas beech wood is resistant to all that so for something that is worn daily you would definitely want beads that are durable and resistant and hardy and sturdy so definitely go with the beech wood beech is naturally more expensive than natural wood but trust me it pays for itself over time and you will find that you will just have far less complaints using beech as opposed to natural. Don't get me wrong, natural wood beads are still great for many other projects, but for this particular tutorial, I would recommend using the beech. We have now come to the end of this beaded lanyard tutorial and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and you've taken a lot out of it. I hope you've enjoyed the tips. If there's any suggestions, feedback that you want us to know, please drop a comment down in the comment section. I've linked all our socials in the description box so please give us a follow and let us know in the comment section what other tutorials you would like to see on our channel and we will definitely work on all those for you thank you so much for watching and happy crafting